Hello the internet and welcome back to the live stream. It is Tuesday the 21st of July 2020. 21 days into the month of July and that's 21 days of live streams right here on the YouTube channel. Thanks for being here with me through this month. This is Julive, as you may be well aware. Julive is a concept not designed by me, not thought up by me. It's created by the Danny Black. Now I put a little linky poo in the chit chat for his channel, just giving him props. This is his concept, not my concept. The idea of taking the word live, adding it to July, flipping it upside down, making one word out of it, and then going live every day for the month. That's his concept. Um, I'm doing it, he's not, but I want to give the man props. When you hit that link, feel the gives love for the Danny Black. He would love that. 21 days is amazing, right? We've, we've, I've been doing live content on DLive, no dramas, no problems, but uh, there's been a bit of a struggle on YouTube. I gotta say though, since about day, I feel like since like day seven or day eight, we've kind of nailed this down and we're I'm finding it very easy to stream on YouTube these days. We made changes. We didn't do the minute longer crap. We just did the thing that we want to do. And um, I'm no longer using Restream.io. I'm streaming directly in. I don't use Speedify. I just use one 4G connection. And um, everything seems good. Everything seems seems like it's going well, going along really, really fine. You know what today is though, folks? It's a 10th stream. Every 10 streams here on YouTube, we open a special bottle of Jack. And that's the one we're opening today. That's coming into me. That's getting into me on this stream. But we'll get into that in a little while. I want to address the chat. And there has been a couple of updates to scenarios COVID style here in Australia. I want to address the chat's been chatting about it now. And hey, that's the beauty of a live stream, right? The chat can, <clears throat> the chat can dictate where we go and what we talk about. And by the way, the longer we push this back for me to open the jack, the more into the morning I get. This is my morning here. It's just gone 9 a.m. I can still taste toothpaste in my mouth. So I don't really want to be drinking whiskey straight away. In fact, I should uh, just get some of this water in me as well and sort of wash out some of that toothpaste. I don't want the toothpaste to ruin the jack. So we'll get into the jack in a little while after the break. If you're just here for the Jack Daniels opening, Come back in about 20 minutes, I'd say. 20 minutes and we'd be into it. And if you're here at the replay and you only want to see the Jack opening, skip forward, say, 20 minutes. That'll probably help you. Now, let me go up and read the chit-chat. Tim began this morning with howdy do. Hello, Timsky. Mindy said, hey, Tim, what's up? And then I came in at 8.30. I've been doing that kind of regularly. Half an hour before stream begins, I come in the chat. I said, uh, morning Tim, evening Mindy. That's because it's morning for Tim and that's because it's evening for Mindy. You see how I did that? I coincided the time zones. Benon, how are you? Mindy asked. Um, I'm good. Uh, hey Mindy, just taking Ethan to school and returning home. That's Tim's talking, Timski. Hey Benon, I'm good. Looking forward to whiskey in the morning. Whiskey in the morning. Mindy asked me, did my padded shirt arrive yet? No, it did not. And like we discussed yesterday on the stream, it's actually only coming from up the street here. I could have driven there and got it before now, for sure, right? Um, maybe, I don't even know if they do have a shop front down in, in Sussex Inlet where Ocean and, Earth, Ocean and Earth, they're based in Sussex Inlet. Maybe they got a shop front, I could have gone and picked it up. Either way, it's not here yet, but I do want to address that. Mindy said, that's crazy, but I guess it's giving your ribs time to heal. I said, I know, right? Could be COVID related. Everything is blamed on COVID. And I said, I still feel discomfort at times, and I'll explain on the stream, which is right now. This is the stream. This is it. This is live. Hello, hello. Remember someone coming to the chat the other day saying, is this live? Uh, yeah, yeah, this is live. That's the point of a live stream. But the discomfort I still feel, and this is kind of pretty rare, but if I'm laying, like, let's just say it's, let's just say it's like 3 a.m. or 2 a.m. or something, and I've been sleeping, and I half wake up to roll over. Well, when I turn over, I feel discomfort in this side. I'm not going to lie. There's, there's, it's not all hunky-dory. It's not all hunky-dory down there. Something's wrong. I'm hoping the rib guard protecting vest helps me man, um, mitigate that pain. I was going to say mandate that pain. Mitigate the pain and so I can go surfing because as you saw on the streaming from Steve and IRL stream, the conditions were really good last weekend on Saturday and I couldn't go. 
I couldn't go surfing. So I want to have my board in the vehicle in Steve Ann so that if that happens, I can get out there and go for a wave. Um, speaking of streaming from Steve Ann, I think that this episode for DLive, the, the Culborra Beach episode for DLive will take place on Friday this week. Last night, looking at the weather report, Friday is sunny, Saturday and Sunday is rain. So I don't want to be doing it when it's raining, ideally. I will do rain rain streams if it happens, but I'm not going to be... If I can choose, and the window of opportunity for the weekend looks like Friday. So we'll we'll check. I'll check again as we move in closer to, to that day. But at the moment, I would suggest it's going to be Friday. And instead of being 1.30 Eastern Australian time, it's going to be 2 p.m. So half an hour back from what it was. The reason I'm pushing it back half an hour, I'm going to push it back half an hour each each time because we're now moving into summer, right? And sunsets are happening progressively later in the day. So we need to we need to factor that in. So yeah, it's going to be at 2 2 p.m. Eastern Australian time this Friday, but I'll put all the I'll put all the linky poos out and everything, get that out there. But anyway, um Mindy, I noticed in the photos on Facebook that no masks are being worn at restaurants. You're talking about wearing masks, COVID style. At least they're separating the tables. And I suggested it depends where you are because here in this country, as of tomorrow evening, midnight, sorry, is it either midnight Wednesday or midnight tonight? Mandatory face masks in Victoria. On the spot fine for non-compliance. If you don't have a face covering, you will be fined. That's starting in 20, 24 hours. Holy shit. I mean, and what I want to do, I'll address the chat, get to the bottom of the chat. Then I'd like to go across and look at sort of like the progression of how we got here because I found two news reports, one of them from the 25th of June, and the title is Facing Facts. Melbourne, and this is Victoria where Melbourne is, Melbourne urged to wear face masks in public. And then there's another report after that I want to look at that says this was the 12th of July. Oh, wait a second. June. Oh, sorry. Yeah. So so that's back in June. And then on the 12th of July, this next report is should wearing face masks be mandatory? That's a little further closer to today's date. And then I want to run a report from the 19th of July, which was two days ago, Victoria's face mask mandate. So I want to just kind of walk through how it went from you know, you probably should wear masks, right? We're in a pandemic here. And then it's like, well, should we? And then it's like, you're going to have to from now on, right? So I think that maybe we're a bit slow on taking up on this. Maybe this should have been done maybe back in January when this thing was popping off and everyone was wearing masks in Asia. They were all wearing masks. We didn't do it. I'm just saying. So that's what we're going to discuss before we get into the jack. Mindy says crazy on the spot fines for non-compliance. Wow, here you are just not allowed. To, here you are just not allowed inside of a premise without a mask on. Interesting. And I said they are getting all, they are getting tough here. Knit all. That's a typo. Knit all. That's what it looks like when you type incorrectly in the chat. Gives a minute. They are getting tough here. I think I was supposed to say with all. Here, every city has a different rule, says Mindy. Every city, I mean, that's kind of the same here, I suppose. Every every state or territory has their own kind of thing that they're doing, and no one really knows why or who's got the best rule. Tim, it's been announced that as of Thursday morning, May, oh, hang on. Tim says it's been announced that as of Thursday morning, major retailers won't allow people without a mask to enter their store. Well, I mean, yeah, fair enough. Throughout all Australia? No, that's just in Melbourne and the lockdown areas, says Tim, yeah. Mindy, it sounds like the same approach to the US. Tim says the shop workers union have complained that it may lead to violence from people being refused entry or service without wearing a mask. They should have masks available for those without. That's a fair point. That's a fair point. I know that there's um, there's a lack of masks out there, right? Perd beer. Uh, hey, Perdski. Uh, hi, Mindy and Tim. Per, uh, Mindy, we haven't had any violence over the masks at stores so far. Uh, hey, Mindy's there, Perd Beer, but okay if you're if you're by. <laughs> bye, bye, Perd. Bye, Mindy and Tim. How's work going? Mindy asked Tim, there's quite a few videos on YouTube showing violence in the stores in the US. Mindy said, really? We haven't looked at that yet. I mean, we, we probably won't look at that on this stream, but sure. Perd Beer, I can't stay long, but I thought I'd show my face. I'll crack open a sleep beer. Holy crap, Perdski. 
Mindy says, I guess I should watch the news. And Shyla Rose in the house. This one's for you, Shyla. No one else got cheeses. Why did you get one? I don't know, but there it is. Good morning, Shyla. Uh, Mindy's channel. Hey, Shyla. Hey, Mindy. Work is terrible. German is terrible. Oh, you're not enjoying Germany per beer? That's a shame. How about you? Uh, Mindy, I'm at work right now, so I may need to step away. Fair enough, Mindy. Fair enough. Doing the late shift. Cool, cool. Hi, Shala. Good morning, Shala. With the rose and the love. Per beer, the police are really cracking down on masks here. A minimum fine is 50, 50 euro for not wearing a, a mask. So you've already got this in Germany. Mandatory masks. Per beer, every few minutes an announcement comes on the speaker, no matter what mode of transport you're on. Okay. Uh, Tim, 50 euro, the fine is 200 uh, Australian here. The fine is 200. I thought it was 220. 122 euro. I mean, that's that's a fair fair fine, right? For not wearing a mask. I'd be nervous to ride on any mass transit mode. Yeah, me too. Me too. Tim, if you're without a valid excuse, the fine is... What? So, so hang on. There's two levels of fines in Australia, Tim. If you're, if you're caught without a mask, you can be fined 200 Australian. But if you don't have a valid excuse... The fine is AUD 1600, about almost 900 euro. Interesting. TKK 9090. Morning, Ben on. Morning, everyone. Hey, TK, how you going, man? Sup, Ben on. Podski. Hi, TKK. Podbe. Yeah, nearly all, uh, nearly all fines are steeper in Oz. Fines should be tied to income, like in Norway. Interesting. Message retracted from Podski. Wow, I love a good retraction. I read there is an outbreak in Bateman's Bay. Is there? Is there really? That's not far from here. It might be a tumor. It's not a tumor. My dad's gyn gynecologist. He looks at vaginas all day long. Okay, okay. We took a turn there, didn't we, folks? Timsky, I'm enjoying myself without wearing a mask while out shopping. I'm enjoying myself wearing a mask while out shopping. No one can see your mouth, so I'm doing sound effects as I walk along. <laughs> Tim, I told uh, Pertsky, I told my work colleagues I was thinking of entering medicine to do gynecology. I should get an exemption due to extensive experience at work. My manager didn't find it funny. Well, there you go, folks. We weren't going to take a turn down that path, but we did. That's the bottom of the chit chat, so I'll bring it on screen for us all to play along. Cheers for the comments, folks. Uh, Tim, Benon, I think the fines may vary state to state. My figures are in Victoria, but what's the figure in Victoria? You said the you first of all you said the fine is two hundred Australian, and then you said if you don't have a valid excuse, the fine is sixteen hundred. So either you're not wearing a mask and you get a fine and you don't have an excuse, but now there's the 16, I don't get what the two two fines are. Benny Crawford in the house. G'day, Benny. Good morning, Ben on and Chit Chat. Good morning, Benny. How do you do, man? You've been watching the surfing on, on YouTube, man. We're getting, the east coast of this country has been getting some great sets coming through, some great waves. Everyone's getting fun times. I, I've seen... So there's a Facebook group that a photography channel for Culborough Beach and everyone's been videoing the, the surfing and down in front of the lake, like at the Wollambula. Wow. Holy shit. Some great, great waves coming through. I'm missing it all. As soon as this rip, as soon as this vest comes back, uh, comes in, I'm going to be out there and getting back into it. But let's take a look at this Corona situation before we bump into the, the Jack opening. Um, so I've got three reports here. This one here, I, like I said earlier, this one here is from the 25th of June, Facing Facts, Coronavirus, Melbourne urged to wear face masks in public. So this is not mandatory at this point. This is just the, the suggestion, the urging of doing this. This is Melbourne City, which is the, the main city of Victoria. Let's have a little look at this. And I'll make this full screen too. Melbournians are being urged to wear face masks in crowded public environments. A leading epidemiologist says masks are not foolproof, but it's better to be safe than sorry. I, re I really, I'm really interested in hearing the the verbiage on this and how it tr how it changes as we move along. Because this gentleman just said that masks are not foolproof, but they're being urged. So now. As we know, we're now a month and a half after this report, and now it's mandatory. But if they're not foolproof, why is it mandatory? I'm just putting it out there. I'm just I'm just raising the question. If it's not foolproof, why is it mandatory? Medical reporter Emily Rice explains. 
Wearing a mask in Melbourne is not sanctioned pandemic policy, but many are shielding their faces as the contagion spreads. I just feel more comfortable because it does prevent me from touching my face. Uh, just to stay safe, I always say, like, better safe than sorry. World Health Organisation advisor and epidemiologist Mary Louise McLaws says it's time for a rethink on face mask protocol. It's now time to embrace the WHO guideline for wearing a mask in public when you can't keep your social distancing. New international research indicates countries where face covering is common, like Hong Kong, have lower COVID cases. We believe broader mask use is key to control the pandemic. As the saying goes, better safe than sorry. That That's can fair. actually protect you from anywhere between 30% to even up to 70%. AMCAL's Brindley Hosking says the pharmacy chain is prepared for demand to rise. We have over a million masks available and you can purchase them in store or online. The most effective is a medical grade mask. The next best option is a fabric version, ideally with three layers, an outer a water resistant layer, a filtering layer and an inner absorbent layer. The state government's current recommendation is wearing a mask is not necessary if you are well. That advice hasn't changed. There is a uh, World Health Organisation have issued some statements in relation to the wearing of masks. WHO advice is seniors and people with underlying health conditions should wear a medical mask in environments where they can't physically distance. Emily Rice, Nine News. So there you go, not mandatory, and the advice from the health organization was that it doesn't stop the stop the um, spread of the disease. That was a month and a half ago. As we're gonna see, we're gonna see two different, three different reports, and we're gonna move towards the change in attitude to you have to wear one. Um, Tim says, without, without a mask in public areas, if you're out doing something authorized, so if you're out in public and you're allowed to be out in public without a mask, so hang on, that's, that's badly worded, Tim. If you're out in public, which you shouldn't be, because you, if you're out in public without a valid reason, you're going to get a $1,600 Australian, you're going to get a $1,600 fine if you're out in public without a valid reason. If you're out in public with a valid reason and you're not wearing a mask, you'll get a $200 fine. Wow. We have had face masks as mandatory in enclosed spaces since the beginning. What the fuck? What's the fucking big deal? Do it. I mean, Perd, I, I agree. I agree with you. And I'm, I'm not saying, I'm not saying here that we shouldn't be wearing masks. I'm saying that we sh probably should have been doing this from the very beginning, right? From January. I said that already before. It also makes you wonder. Like I've been to Asia. I've been to China, and I've been to many different Asian cities of Australia and, and South Australia and I've been into many different Asian communities all my life they've always worn masks and I, I'm, I'm not I am guess I'm asking why have Asian communities always worn face masks not everybody but you you go to Hurstville right you go to Hurstville you go to the bloody you walk through the 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 um you walk through Gouger Street in in South Australia, in Adelaide and you see Asians wearing masks. This goes back forever. So why have they always worn masks? We never have. Like the rest of the population in Australia never wears masks, but the Asian community's always worn them. I'm just asking why. I don't understand it. Here we have a pandemic where everyone's now um, manda mandated to wear masks. Did the Asians have something one up on us already? Did they already know about this? I don't know. Just saying. Um, Tim says a mask will deliver some degree of protection provided it's kept clean and tidy on, and of suitable construction. I mean, Tim, did, did what, then if that's the if that's the case, why did they not force us to wear them from the beginning? That's what I I, I, I hate this. I hate this the way this is moved. Right? We hear people people. And I'm not I'm not having a crack at you, Tim, but people such as Tim giving advice about things when the governments and the health organization gave the opposite advice, right? You're saying a mask will deliver some degree of protection. That's not what they were saying before. They were saying there's no reason to wear a mask unless, you're, unless you've got symptoms. So either it protects you from getting the disease or it protects others from getting the disease. You just said your comment, Tim, is the opposite of what the, the governments were telling us. And all I'm saying is why has there been so much disinformation so many people with better information than what they're actually giving us. Well, I feel like we could have stopped this by now if it had been the same information 
across the board from the beginning. Heard. I'm not totally convinced, but unless you unless you're a peer-reviewed medicine guru, then why open your pie hole? That's true. All you have to do is look at the Taiwanese data. They don't get lucky. They made their luck. Tim, the masks they just showed is good for infected people to wear as they prevent the infected droplets from leaving the mask. However, they are not too good if you're trying to prevent becoming infected. Okay, I wish they had said that, right? Like you, all of a sudden, Tim's the doctor, and I'm not. I'm not saying anything against you, Tim. I'm just saying this is the way it's been. You see it all over social media. You see it all over Twitter. I'm just using you as an example because you're putting the the comments in the chat. But you see it everywhere. Everybody with a different opinion. Everybody with a different take of different, um, a different level of knowledge. And then we, where do, where do we get? We get here. Well, a major hospital in Melbourne could be forced into shutdown with eight staff members testing positive to coronavirus as the outbreak forces students back into remote learning. Dr. Viom Sharma is a GP practicing in Melbourne and he joins us now. Doctor, good morning to you. Thank you for your time this morning. Do you feel healthcare workers are being adequately protected at the moment? The protection has come, but it's come quite late, frankly. Uh, we've had rising community transmission until the, uh, since the end of June, and yet masks were only made a mandatory uh, last week. The advice is trickling in very slowly, being implemented very slowly. This guy's, this guy's talking about the idea of it being mandatory, and he's, the way he's talking is exactly what I'm saying. Why has it shifted so... Isn't the idea to stop this? right? Isn't the idea to stop this? Then we should have stopped it by now. And as a result, what we've got is not just this one outbreak at this hospital that's getting a lot of attention, but seven different hospitals across Melbourne with hundreds of staff in mm. quarantine. So support doesn't just mean... Um, it, it's not just about uh, looking at the numbers of infected staff going, oh, look, there's not that many who've got COVID-19. It's also about the number of people who are exposed. Mm. And when we've got staff being exposed in the hundreds, you know well, there's more we can do. Uh, up in the chat... Um Tim says, a mask with disposable filters like spray painters use is the best to prevent to prevent becoming infected, but they freely levy out infected droplets due to the way exhaled air is vented. Tim, let me ask you a simple question. Let me ask you a simple question. In January, when this thing popped off, should we all have worn masks? Infected, not infected, sick, not sick, should we all have worn masks? Simple question. In January 2020, when this thing popped off in Australia, should we have all worn masks? There, I said it. Uh, Perd beer, and you don't know if you have it, so it makes sense to assume everyone has it and everyone should cover up. Onion pie, this is Tim. Tim is not true. I'm not a doctor, but N95 type masks have an electromagnetic field and fibers. Large particles are easily stopped like... Don't read this, I'm rewriting it. Oh shit. Okay, sorry, onion pie. Sorry, dude. And good to see you, by the way. Nice to have you. This cheese is for you. Onion pie. Tim, we have had a great deal of public info about masks in the media down here. It was pointed out that the fiber masks being sold have limitations and are single use only. Uh, Sharla Rose, the government should be handing out proper masks. People are forced to pay way too much for shopkeepers looking to make huge profits. True. It's all too little too late now. Tim, onion pie. I worked in pest control, the chemical industry, so I know the limitations of a lot of masks. Tim, answer the question. Answer me this question. In January 2020, when this thing popped off, should we all have worn masks? Should it have been a mandatory? This is a worldwide pandemic sweeping across every country. Should Australia have said, you're wearing a mask, I don't care, mandatory? What they're doing now in Melbourne. Should that have, should that have happened from the onset? Doesn't matter whether you're sick. Doesn't matter whether you've tested positive, whether you've tested negative. Everybody should wear I want to hear your answer. Should we have worn masks? Um, Perd beer. I, I agree, Charlotte. The the burger mats. The city halls have been handling them out, handing them out for free for a few hours each day, but they are pretty crap quality. Okay. How does it happen? I mean, how do medical professionals um, go to work with any? Ben on. Yes, if masks had have been adopted earlier, it would have helped greatly. Then the the point I want to make right there, Tim, is every single thing that you're putting in the chat is kind of irrelevant. All the individual things about fiber masks and this and that doesn't mean anything. We sh we don't even need to add that kind of um, discussion. You should just put in the chat, wear a mask. Done.
No need to talk about the different masks. No need to talk about whether you're ill or whether you've got symptoms or whether you're showing symptoms or whether you're in a known cluster or you're in a hot zone area or whether you're on this side of the border or that side. You should have just said, everybody wear a mask. That's what, that's, that's what I'm saying. We see people in social media constantly giving this, info, this information and all it does is cloud the shit up, right? Nobody understands. If they had just said, wear a mask, cover your face. And, and if you don't, you're gonna get fined. If you don't wear a mask, you're breaching a law. It would have been simple, right? But we've got so many doctors and experts coming out saying, well, if you've got this kind of a mask or if you've got that symptom or if you've got this, it's seven months in the, down the track. We're in July and we're getting bigger numbers. Um, Yes, Tim. Uh, Toad Beer says yes. Onion pie. So Tim is not right. I'm not a doctor, but N... Okay, so this is your comment, but you've rewritten it. Uh, I'm not a doctor, but N95 type masks have an electromagnetic field and fibers. Regular fibers stop sand and such. Spray masks aren't magnetized. One of two. The second is small particles are stopped by imagine electromagnetic field. Medium particles aren't stopped as easily. Oh, I'm also saying irrelevant stuff, but if you want to reuse your mask, don't worry. All, all this stuff, like for real, for real, all this stuff is just so over the top ridiculous. There's a virus that's sweeping across the world, killing people. Fucking wear a mask. Done. Done in January. Close the fucking borders for incoming flights and everybody wear a mask. It's not hard to work out. And there, um, everyone made a joke of it in January, February. That's true, Charlotte. That's very true. But that, that's what I'm saying. Like the government should have stepped in and said, all right, folks, we've seen what happened in Italy. We're seeing what's going on. Here's the thing. Nobody wants to do this. But that's, that's why I said, right? This is why I brought this up. Why do the Asian communities already wear masks? Why has the... The Hurstfuls and like I said, the Gaja Streets and all the, the, the Asian, the little communities of Asian, the pockets of Asian communities all over this country. Why have they always worn masks? Do they know something we don't know? Why why is it cool to wear a mask in out in public if you're Asian? And why does like, why do we look at them and go, where, what are you, Michael Jackson wannabes? What are, why, like... We're all scoffing at it. Like we're all discussing about the fucking fibers inside masks and the particles and the N95s and all that shit. And these guys have been wearing them for fucking years. Why? Like why, why are they doing it? And why are we not? And why is it such a big deal? It's so stupid, right? We could have, we could have already sorted this shit out. Um, the trouble is a large sector of the population won't wear them. Again, I asked the question, why have the Asians been wearing them forever? Uh, who also recommended against wearing masks into the epidemic? Another one of their failures. There you go. Purd beer. Yep, you're right. Um, there you go. So that, uh, that's what I'm saying. This comes down from the top, right? We need we needed we needed the govern the governing bodies to govern. Is that fair? We needed them to govern, and they didn't. They didn't pull the shit together and say, "Here's the situation." Here's the result. Here's what we can do to, 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 to mitigate this. Um, I predict by 2021, the biggest part of the planet will be affected too late to wear a condom once the baby arrives. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's that's a fair point. Confidence they aren't going to get it. It's been a battle right from the start, right from March. We have been behind in the race to get adequate personal protective equipment. And often the system has been working against staff. They're being actively discouraged from wearing masks. Here's the other thing. He's just said we have, we've had difficulty getting uh, masks. We've, there's been a short supply. Well, the Asian populations far outnumber the Caucasians. They've all had masks forever. Where do they get them from? Why couldn't we get them from there? Uh, you, you might say, dude, you're, 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 you're tending quite towards um, the R word. It's not. I'm not. I'm not being Rist, right? I'm not even going to say the word here on YouTube. I'm just wondering, how has this gone where it has, and why do we like? Why does why does someone of my descent scoff at the idea of wearing a mask? We just saw people on the on the on the report there, Vox Pop saying, oh, I don't want to wear a mask. I don't think they work. Why do we worry about that when the Asians never have? They've been. I grew up, I've, I'm 44. I've seen Asians in 
in schools when I was a kid wearing masks way back in the day. What, what are they wearing them for? What viruses have they got that we never had? Benny Crawford, small rant, not sure how anyone else feels about this, but I'm getting sick of hearing the word COVID over 500 times a day in full knowledge that the same thing will happen tomorrow and the next day. I mean, yeah, Tim. Ah, uh, sorry, Tim. Yeah, Benny, for sure. Yeah. Tim says the Asians started wearing the masks years ago to protect themselves from dust and pollutants from cat truck exhausts in populated areas. That's also why some cyclists wear them while riding in traffic. I mean, that's one one use case, Tim, but I've seen... I'm from Sydney, man. I've... I've I was skateboarding through Hurstville as a 13 year old, and there was Asians walking the streets wearing masks. I'm not, I, and I'm just asking, I'm just wondering why they accept it and we don't. Onion pie, not to brag here, but in Germany it's near perfect. The situation is almost as before the numbers are going down. I mean, you can't deny the numbers, right? You can't deny the numbers. Uh, lest it scare patients. So it's it's really not good enough. I think we've finally gotten on board. Uh, the, the uh, Really, the government should have given um, a much more support through guidelines, encouraging things like cloth masks for patients and visitors uh, to make it a sustainable thing that everyone around the hospital environment can wear masks. So I Bingo. think it's, it's happening. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but it's it's been a it's been a battle and uh, not a very encouraging one. Look, I, I took a flight um, over the weekend. Um, luckily enough, on Friday from from New South Wales to Queensland, um, a lot of people had had masks on, but the staff on Jetstar didn't have masks on. So there are there are rules or there are no rules. People are making up their own mind. I don't understand. It either works or it doesn't. Or if it does, or if this is he's voicing my exact opinion here. And if it does work then why haven't we had this mandated before? It's pretty simple, right? There's a chance that it does, then make it mandatory. There are still many inconsistencies, and a lot of it just comes down to confusing messaging. So the government does say uh, on, on both levels, federal and state, that you should be wearing masks if you can't socially distance. If there is, why... Ben on the Australia ran out of public supply of masks that meet the... Tim, 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 Tim. Forget Australian standards, forget the fibre, forget the contents. We're now being told to make your own mask. So forget all that shit, Tim. I'm not even going to read the comment. I'm not even going to read the comment because that information that you're putting out is irrelevant. If they're now telling us, cover your face with... Go and get your spotlight pattern that they're giving you for free and cut out your own pillowcase and wear a goddamn mask. So all this Australian standards crap, irrelevant, right? Irrelevant. We just needed to get this information clearly delivered at the beginning of this and adapted it. And I keep saying, why do we, why do we even talk that way when the Asians have always worn masks? community transmission. This is the situation that Melbourne is finding itself in. And yet we're still getting terrible bits of messaging. For example, uh, there are kids going back to school today and yet uh, masks are not recommended for those under 18, uh, even in Victoria and Melbourne. And you've got uh, the, the health minister, Greg Hunt, promoting infographics from the federal government with the, the big question at the start saying, uh, do you need to wear a mask? And the first word answer is no. You hear that? <laughs> Benny, uh, also those folks who decided to use the word waves to describe the pandemic need to understand that these come in sets, sometimes seven or nine waves, and the biggest waves always like the 12th or something. Onion pie, what pisses me off is that the Russian government uses the COVID excuse to ban protests and I'm now passing, and he's now passing a law that will allow Putin to rule until 2036. I mean, we could talk into that, but we won't. Well, you know, I, I feel you. And then he says, just don't breathe, bro. Yeah, I mean, right, right. That's that's taking it to the next extreme. But how far until that happens? How far until it's like, you're not allowed out of your homes. And if you are out of your home, not just a mask. You saw those face shields. You also need to take your own oxygen. Because if you breathe in other people's oxygen, potentially you're breathing in the, the virus. I mean, <sighs> right? and then a bunch of exceptions. The messaging needs to be sorted out. It's true, masks are a complicated thing to convey. They do have some trade-offs, but they are likely to confer some kind of benefit. We just need far better communication from the government. If we've got them, let's make them mandatory. I mean, you want everything in your arsenal, don't you? Fair, fair point. I'm not really a fan of that guy, but fair point. He did he did hit that point pretty pretty clearly, I thought. So that's what we heard leading up to this and now this is the point of this part of the stream before we get into the jack we are now being told in melbourne mandatory mask 
and no, like, it's not like go and buy the, the stuff that Tim was mentioning, the fiber and all that crap. It's just cover your face with material. This is meant, if you do not cover your face with a mask and you're in Victoria, you will cop an on the spot fine. This is coming out as of either tonight at midnight or the next night. I can't recall if it's beginning Wednesday or beginning Thursday, but at midnight, either in 12 hours or in 24, if you leave your home and you're not wearing a face mask, you will be fined 200 Australian dollars. Mask up, that is the new order for residents of Melbourne and the Mitchell Shire. The Victorian government mandating people cover their faces whenever they leave their homes. Christina Hearn leads our coverage in Melbourne. And Chris, first they were deemed unnecessary, then encouraged. You know what, sorry, just to, just to continue to butt in, it's a very mixed message. The point I'm trying to make here, two points. Why, it's a, it's a mixed message. Why didn't we get the straight up confirmation at the beginning? And why are we struggling to understand it when the Asians have been using them forever? In this news report, it's a, this is not helping the message. When you see a, a beautiful news reporter, and, and there's four of them here, well, five in totes, right? So there are four people. She's wearing, she's wearing a mask incorrectly, which is sending out of the wrong signal. These other three beautiful news reporters aren't wearing a mask at all. So it comes from the top in, right? You've got to, you've got to make people clear. You've got to make the message clear. You've got to make people understand. And presenting a presenter wearing a mask under her chin, you could say, yeah, but she's presenting the news dude. Well, this... This is an exact example of how you could get the message out very simply. If all five of these people had a face mask, you'd be saying, well, they're in a studio. They're not. Who cares, man? It's seven months in and we're getting higher numbers. And they're telling us now face, face masks work. Very, very strange messages, folks. Very, very strange. But listen to what she's saying here. She's she's highlighting this. Tina Hearn leads our coverage in Melbourne. And Chris, first they were deemed unnecessary, then encouraged, now they're compulsory. What's behind the government's change of heart? 363 new cases yesterday, Ali, and we keep on recording big numbers. So the Victorian government is doing anything to try and stop the spread, even though, as you mentioned, uh, the messaging we've received here in Victoria is confusing. Nonetheless, as of midnight on Wednesday, it is mandatory to wear a mask in the Greater Melbourne and Mitchell Shire. Here's the other thing, and sorry, that, that confirms it. It's not tonight, it's Wednesday night at midnight. So two days from now, or one and a half days from now, that's a bad pause, by the way, on her face. The other thing is, this is the Victorian government, but they're not, and I got that wrong, it's not Victoria they're doing it, it's only Melbourne, so what we consider, what you might consider the downtown area, the 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 CBD, the, the I get, it's hard to, the metropolitan area, and also another shire called Mitchell, the Mitchell Shire. I think, and you might say you're ridiculous, if you're going to bring this out, I can do it countrywide. Victoria, not just the the Melbourne and Mitchell area, all of Victoria, and then every other state should say, yeah, okay, cool. From here on in, covering the country, countrywide. Uh, in the chat, uh, Perdbeer Stefanov Stefanovic looks younger than I remember. Iwami Gennaro in Spain. Hey, hello, Iwami. I'm not sure if I'm saying your handle correctly. In Spain, it's been like this since Wednesday. Okay, cool. Wednesday night, 12.59. Yeah, that's when the rules come in for me, Victoria. Yeah, cool, cool. It's nice to compare these clips on the timeline. Isn't that interesting, Perdbeer? The, the, the verbiage and the language has changed dramatically from those two reports before. It is mandatory to wear a mask in the Greater Melbourne and Mitchell Shire. If you don't wear a mask and you go outside after that deadline, you could cop a $200 fine. Victoria Police, however, say they will be using discretion. Common sense will... And, 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 and this is an issue, right? What kind of discretion, what kind of common sense is there when they pass a law and it says, if you leave your home after midnight on Wednesday without a face mask, you could cop a $200 fine. The message needs to be, if you leave your home after midnight on Wednesday and you don't wear a mask, you will cop a fine. No discretion. You're not, a, you're not wearing a mask. You're getting fined. Make this shit fucking... Nail it down. We get we get fines for not wearing a helmet riding your bicycle in this country. And you don't get out of that. If you don't have a helmet on, you get a fine. This is killing people 
daily, right? And they're saying, you might get a fine. We'll use discretion. Either you're wearing a helmet on the bike or you're not. Either you're wearing a mask after midnight on Wednesday or you're not. It's not very difficult. Apply. There will be medical exemptions. It will not apply to children under 12 as well. A medical exemption? That's kind of strange. Well, however, that means that VCE students who are the only ones doing face-to-face -face learning at the moment will have to wear a mask. Teachers, however, in the classroom will not. It what is the fuck? So the kids will have to wear a mask, the teachers won't. Here, here we go again. Here we go again. Just make a fucking rule and lay it out. Sorry, I'm getting worked up here. It's ridiculous. Well, this announcement, of course, did cause a rush uh, at chemists as people rushed out to try and get surgical masks. However, the Victorian Premier says it doesn't have to be a mask like this one. It can be any kind of face covering, including a scarf. It comes as it was revealed 80% of Victoria's COVID cases have been spread through the workplace. So the government is cracking down, implementing inspections and also fines up to $10,000 for any employer who does not comply with social distancing rules. And if you needed any other uh, reason to wear a mask, here's some pretty confronting vision. This is a woman expecting twins struggling to breathe. It was taken uh, by her husband and posted on social media just before she was uh, admitted to hospital, uh, the Royal Melbourne Hospital uh, in Melbourne uh, on what? event. Is that supposed to be confronting? That's a picture of her with a cat on her shoulder later. Her husband says just before she got sick, she said if the government says we should wear a mask, we should all do, because you just don't know who is going to get it. Ali? Yeah, that is a devastating development and we're thinking of her and her family at this time. Thank you, Chris. A pregnant mum with kids. Awful, isn't it? Well, the aged care sector has been hit particularly hard in Victoria. Recent outbreaks have sent more than 30 facilities into lockdown. Yesterday, new cases were detected in three more... OK, so we're just seeing new cases uh, through healthcare regions there. I thought this would be more about the mask. Here we go, the Batemans Bay Cluster. Post. Gabby Boyle is in Chippendale, another new hotspot. Gabby, good morning to you. Contact tracing has revealed just how far this virus has now spread. Yeah, we're seeing cases pop up right across New South Wales this morning. Carl, I want to bring you up to date with some of those latest locations with a map. Wentworthville, Parramatta, Chippendale, Casula, Marylands, Picton, even down as far as Batemans Bay. And, of course, it was at the Batemans Bay Soldiers Club that they've had a real cluster problem. Crikey. It was back on July 13 that we saw a father and son visit that venue and have dinner uh, several days later now. And we've got eight people in total that have contracted COVID-19 from the Crikey. Batemans Bay Soldiers Club. The message is... If you visited that day or any day subsequently, you really do need to go out and get tested immediately. Uh, people that have visited that club are being told to self-isolate because even if you don't have uh, symptoms and signs or the virus at the moment, it can, of course, pop up. So they're taking that particular outbreak really seriously. I'm joining you this morning from Chippendale, just outside of Sydney's CBD, and it is here at Holy Duck, a modern Chinese restaurant that they've had another case diagnosed as well. Of course, the concern is that this is such a built-up area. One person comes in with the virus and we know from experience just how quickly it can spread uh, so uh, uh, contact tracing will be done from this location as well as deep cleaning the new south wales uh, state government has said that it is advisable for people that are going into areas where you can't social distance to wear a mask at this stage it's not being made mandatory see that hear that in new south wales just over the border it's not mandatory to wear a mask uh, by the way, I, I'm going to bump out of that now, but I like that the way that you can now get tested in your vehicle, right? So back in January, go and get tested. It was like, don't go and get tested unless you show symptoms and don't leave your home. Now it's like, just go and drive through a mobile testing zone. It's pretty cool. Um, medical exemptions, this is Tim speaking. Medical exemptions are those with breathing difficulties such as asthma or psychological fear of masks. I mean, if you've got a fear of a bit of cotton over your mouth, maybe you shouldn't be out in public as well. Benny Crawford, Purd, your comment the other day about the attire being worn by the Florida astronauts sparked a giggle that turned into a full-scale laughing fit. That lasted for 20 minutes. I remember you had a bit of a giggle in that stream. Onion pies, all right, I'm out. Got to see you later, guys. No worries, onion pie. Benny Crawford, see you, onion. Folks, I guess I want to leave it at that, but you guys did like pop this off in the chat. I wasn't going to talk about the mandatory masks in, in Victoria until tomorrow, but maybe, you know what we can do? Maybe we can check in on that after it rolls out, maybe on Thursday or maybe Friday, right? That'll be two days after this um, 
new process has been mandatory for two days. We'll check back in and see how it's going. How close is Batemans Bay? It's about an hour to the south of here, maybe a, maybe a little longer. That's actually it's longer than that. It's probably about an hour and a half. Um, but to get to the Jack opening, we're going to open the Jack very very soon. But to get us there, my latest album, The Armageddon. Here's a promo piece: how you can get my album for free after this Jack Daniels opening. Welcome back to the, uh, no, not a slightly random daily song at all. This is not slightly random, and this is not a song. This is a video to explain to you the Armageddon and how you can get your own copy of the Armageddon. Now, what's the Armageddon? It's my latest release. You know, I've been talking about the music I make under the moniker of That's Um. Well, we've been discussing the latest recording. It's been taking place for the last little while. I'm happy to announce that today is release day, July 1, 2020. Why have I chosen the date July 1st for the release here? No reason except that everything kind of moved towards that being the end point of the recording process. And I figured for the whole month of July, I could promote this album getting it into your hands. I want to give it to you for free. That's the thing. I want to give you the album for free. So as of today and right through the whole month of July, there will be a link that I'll make clear to you either in the description here or in the chat. This is the link for you to go to and to nab the album for free, completely for free. You can download those MP3s and go to town. But the reason I want to talk to you more in detail about that is because I also want you to be able to get your hands on a hard copy if you want it. Now you may not want this. You may just want the songs and that's cool. But if you do want a hard copy of the album, you're going to have to buy it and it's not like you're buying it off a shelf. I'm only going to print the amount that people order. So from July 1, let's say through to July 30, right? That's the whole month. That's the order process. So if you put your order in any time in July, that means you are getting a hard copy of the album, but it hasn't been made yet. At the end of July, I will snap that process off. And if you've ordered, we'll go on and get those printed and then I'll ship them to you. Now the cost will be very, very negligible. I'm not looking to make money here. I'm not a musician. I'm a live streamer. I create content. I enjoy making music, but that's not the point of this. The point of it is to have a bit of a laugh. The only reason I want to do the hard copy is because last time with the second umming, so many people wanted a hard copy and I only had 20 made. So this time I'm not making them until I know how many are wanted. So if you do want to nab a hard copy, go to that link, do all the things there. While you're there, grab the download. This here is not the album. This is mocked artwork. This is the cover of the album, but that is not the actual album. On the album, there are a bunch of songs. There was a time when I tried to explain. It was very blunt, but on the right track. I smoked him hard after a bottle of Jack. And what I said, I would never take back. But he took it the way that a schoolboy would. Without going too deep into the details, I recorded everything. Guitars, bass, lead guitar, rhythm guitar, vocals. Duncan, Buzz Kingo, on certain tracks, he came down here and helped out, added his little bit to it as well. That's all listed on the liner notes in the artwork. Another reason why you'd want to get a hard copy. Duncan down here to help out with the music was so rad. It was so much fun. But he's not the only guest to appear on the album. 
out here in the ocean, one day I was surfing with a South African guy who was holidaying in the next door house. And after a bit of chit chatting, we got hanging out and uh, he kind of said, oh, just curiously, do you happen to have an instrument? I mean, I've been missing the guitar. I play a bit of guitar. He came in, we had a jam, we wrote a song. It's on the album. That all came from surfing right here. Just random surfing with a stranger. Also featured on the album is the handiwork of Lachlan Sheehan. Now Lachlan is the sound engineer with Tracer. He did a beautiful, beautiful job at polishing a turd. He didn't just polish a turd, he rubbed that thing until it shone like Jupiter in all of its glory. Does Jupiter shine? I don't know, but whatever Lachlan did, he made this stuff way better than what it was. Locky, dude, thank you so much, man. Go and have a listen to this and tell me this doesn't sound audible audibly sonically insane. Lucky, yeah! There's also a few cover songs in here. Now you guys wanted me to do Four Non Blondes, so I did that, that's in there. There's also a Pink Floyd cover. There's also an Omnis cover, right? I covered one of my own songs. And the rest of that stuff is brand new material for you to enjoy. But that's not all. You know me and music. My favorite band is Ween. I love the band Ween. And so to make this release even more special, I recorded 20 covers of Ween songs and it's on this album here. The point of me showing you that is, that's also for you as part of this package. When you download the album, The Armageddon, you get this as a bonus free disc. And if you order a hard copy of The Armageddon, you also get a hard copy of 10 more songs by Ween. I've chosen to call it 10 more songs by Ween, but put 20 songs on there to be a little bit silly. But anyway, that's there for you as well. And I'll also throw in some Gives A Minute stickers for those hard copy orders. If you order a hard copy, you'll get some stickers. You'll get three things. You'll get the Armageddon, you'll get 10 more songs by Ween, you'll get a bunch of Gives A Minute stickers. I might even write a handwritten note on there for you as well. But you have to do it between now, July 1, and July 30. After July 30, there will be no more orders. Whatever it is, the number that we have, the amount, is what we go on order. There'll be about a month delay between when they get manufactured and when I can ship them to you. So if you order any time between now and the end of July, I would expect you to receive your copy of the Armageddon in September. That'd be the earliest. I'd say August will be the, the production, then there'll be the mail out. I reckon September you'd get it. That's why there's the download link to grab the music right now if you want it. Don't come to me after July and say, I want the album, man. You won't be able to get it. You'll have to go to Spotify's and Apple Music and all that place to buy it. This is the one month of opportunity. It's July, the opportunity month. Is that enough promo? I don't know about doing promo for my own music. There it is, I promoed my own music. Now look, while I sit down and take a listen to both The Armageddon and 10 more songs by Ween, you guys can go back to the live stream. There's no, this is not a slightly random daily song. Just um, go back to the live stream. I'll see you there. Hey, you caught me folks. That's the Armageddon and how you can get it. I was a little distracted here because it's a 10th stream folks, every 10 streams. Now, normally this takes place every 10 weeks, but because it's due live, every day live in July, the cycle of 10 streams has come up a lot quicker. And every 10 streams, we open up a special bottle of Jack. 
So we're gonna open this guy up on this stream today. We're gonna do it right now. If you are here just for the Jack Daniels openings and you like that concept and you wanna go and see other bottles of Jack that we've opened, we've opened up a whole bunch, about 12 or 13 different bottles. I am now putting timestamp links into the chit chat. Now these timestamp links will take you to each one of those streams going back over the course of 130 different streams where we open up the jack in each of those streams so as you can see the first one there 1907 benny crawford's got a little jack there himself too thank you benny and then we move through a whole variety of jack daniels products today it's going to be very interesting because these July streams happen so rapidly, I didn't want to bust out really cool, expensive bottles of Jack. So we're going through a strange sort of cycle of different size bottles. Now this one here is a very unique size bottle of Jack. What is this? 200 milliliters. 200 milliliters, what is that in... Um, in the, I was gonna say the metric system. What is this in the European system? It's centiliters, 200 centiliters. Let me just brag this here. 200 centiliters, 200 mil bottle of Jack. Now, of course, the contents within this is just your regulation old number seven. So this is nothing fancy. This is just old number seven in a different size bottle. Now you might say, dude, that's kind of pretty lousy. You know, you. You're doing a 10th stream and you're opening up a special bottle. Well, we'll never see the 200 mil version of Jack Daniels again on the stream. That's why it's here. As you can see, uh, available globally, you can get this anywhere. This one's a glass one. I've seen these in plastic as well. This is glass, perfect for your back pocket. If you're going to a festival or something, you know, you want to you wanna get an easy little, easy little access right there. Jack in, Jack out and you're all about it, right? 200 mil slides right in. However, extremely expensive to get this in 200 mil form. This bottle is nearly as expensive as a regular fifth, a regular 700 mil bottle, crazy. So obviously this is regulation on number seven. It's mellow drop by drop by 10 feet of sugar maple. This is their spiel that they promote this. You know I love this, right? This is my favorite. Well, actually, the 1907 is my favorite, but this is really tasty, of course. Um, yeah, the interesting thing about this is it's deemed ready when it looks, smells, and tastes ready. So they've got like master distillers at Jack Daniels that go ahead and sample this daily to make sure that it's ready to go. So in that sense, every bottle is kind of different. Even though it's the same recipe, every bottle is sort of unique, if you like. It's not done by chemical processing. It's done by tasting, smelling, and, and um, visual, visual looking, visual looking, visualizing. Again, 40% alcohol by volume. You know that by now with Jack Daniels, old number seven. One of my favorites. Folks, let's not wait any longer. I can't. Let's open this sucker right now. I'm only going to have a little here on this stream, but then I'm going to finish it off on the DLive stream later on today. I'm actually going to mix it with Coke Zero. That's right, Coke Zero. I normally mix it with Coke Full Sugar, but today on the DLive, it's going to be Coke Zero. You know, you know this flavor, right? It's freaking lovely. Here we go, folks. Just a little, just a little splash here. That's all I'm going to have on this stream, and we're going to polish the rest of that off on the D Live stream tonight. Maybe, I mean, that's that's only 200 mil, but whiskey sampler sounds like a great job. They call them the um, master distillers, I believe. Oh no, they've got no, no. The taste they got, they call them tasters, of course, Tennessee tasters. I mean, that's just my favorite, right? That's my favorite Jack Daniels. And actually, sorry, that's not my favorite. This is just the old favorite, the old number seven. We know that flavoring. Very, very cool stuff. Um, up there in the chat, you see the ones we've opened already. We've opened up 1907. That's an Australian only release. We've opened up Tennessee Fire. We've opened up Legacy Edition number one. We've opened up Tennessee Honey. We've opened up old number seven, one liter bottle. We've opened up old number seven, 50 mil, which would have been, I guess that would have been back last year in July. 
Ah, oh, we've opened up Red Dog Saloon. That was a beautiful one. We've opened up Goose's Bold Selection 2019 number two. We opened up Rested Tennessee Rye. We opened up Tennessee Tasters Hickory Smoked. Now that one was insanely beautiful. Um, 23 bucks at Benny Crawford's local bottle. 6.3 standard drinks. You're damn right. 23 bucks for 200 mils. When you think about how much a regular bottle is, about 40 bucks, maybe 45. Um, and the last one we've opened up there, Tennessee Rye, the 50 mil. So we are uh, certainly moving towards very, very interesting bottles that Jack, I got some cool ones coming. And those Tennessee tasters, they are extremely, extremely expensive in this country. I'm very happy to have them on the channel and getting through them as we move along into this project of Jack Daniels openings, different Jack. You're never going to see this bottle repeated on the stream. Now, you may see another size Jack, right? I told you we've opened up already the one liter and the 50 mil. We've actually never opened up a regular bottle of Jack on the stream, like a 700 mil. They call that a fifth in America or 700 mils in Australia. I believe there's a 750 as well. But folks, I guess that's all I really wanted to hit on this stream today. Um, my intention was not to discuss the COVID-19, but let's dig in again on that on Friday. Let's look deep into how it's turned how things have changed since they've implemented this new uh, mandatory mask policy. We'll do that on Friday on the stream. Benny Crawford, a bit more than a six pack of beer. I like the option. You, yeah, you like the option? Perd beer, Australian tax, right on, man. It's so, so expensive in this country. Like what a perd beer. Do you know what a 200 mil bottle is in Germany of, of Jack? Because I know it's a extremely it's it's way more limiting to to buy this stuff in Australia than it is in Germany. Mm. But damn, that's a good way to start a Tuesday morning. I can tell you now. I'll be drinking more of this tonight on the D Live stream. I'm gonna mix it with Cock Zero. If you want to come along and see that, that's gonna be fun. I don't normally drink throughout the week, but when I'm doing an opening, of course I will. So this is a beautiful, beautiful product. If you want to go and get your own, go ahead and purchase it. Folks, if there's nothing else to discuss on the stream today, I guess we'll wrap this one up. Thank you for all your comments and thank you for all of your suggestions and the commentary regarding the mask wearing. I'll see you all over on DLive later on tonight, or I'll see you back here tomorrow on this stream. Uh, we're going to talk about your favorite desserts. That's correct, your favorite desserts. Perhaps it's Jack Daniels. Could be. Shit, yeah.